everybody, and welcome back to Abduction. We've managed to turn the power on that CW uh, was asking us to look into, and now it seems like we are able to access a new area of his compound or whatever this is. So let's go inside and take a look. Uh, one thing I forgot to do in the last video was to look at that power uh, diagram again that was right by the garage. Uh, but we do know that at least Farley's house seems to be powered up. This area got some power. Um, and at least that sphere, the stone sphere that rotates, uh, got some power as well. So we'll check that out here in a little bit. I'm kind of curious to know how exactly CW has survived without power. Maybe he has some kind of auxiliary setup there in his, uh, uh, his vault. And we've got a bunch of panels or something on these carts here on the track. Not sure what these are for. But uh, if you look closely, you'll notice that that pathway is actually the same one that leads to that door that we couldn't get to, this one right here, when we were up there earlier. Somehow we can reach across this and, and touch it. But the door still doesn't open, understandably. And even if it was unlocked, we couldn't open it. So, At any rate, let's take a look around and see what he's got up in this little workshop. At least it looks like a workshop. He's tinkering with all these red, pointy things that we've been seeing that create the holograms. And uh, if this is any indication, it looks like these things are also responsible, as we had suspected, for those red-tinted rocks. Let's see what all we've got to look at here. Mayor's Imager Requests, Entry Canyon, Farley's House, Center of Town, Tree, and Water Source, Waterfall. And these are all marked with uh, an asterisk, which seems to indicate that these are where the imagers are. And we've actually seen all five of these. But there are four more that are not marked, and maybe these are just ones that they haven't gone around to putting in yet. Membrane, Wall, Cell, question marks, The Wall Slash Tower, uh, locomotive power generator and scrapyard slash garage. I'm gonna assume that the wall, the one that's capitalized here, is referring to the dividing wall that separates the north and south portions of Hunrath, not the outer wall um, that uh, this refers to. Presumably because the tower that we uh, see reference to here is most likely the same one that's uh, marked on that power map. Ambassador Seed Swap Machine Functionality. Radius of Swap Sphere is defined at first swap, immutable. Needs recharge naturally from ubiquitous ambient membrane power radiation, tied to tree health. Forcing seed open triggers prep behavior, radius demarcation. Small battery added to amplify ambient membrane power, charges continuously. Parabolic focusing of power used to trigger seed swap behavior. Locking location of swap machines assures predictability, no un unanticipated damage. Radius demarcation also occurs at same location and destination sphere. Without a pair seed defining the destination swap location, the destination coordinates match the source. Voila, swapping on demand. Now we don't really know what a lot of this means yet, but we have seen what it could refer to, and that is that there are certain sections of land that seem to be scooped out of locations and dumped here into Hunrath, such as the one that we uh, had used to get here in the campground area. So we'll have to remember this as we go even further. And we've also got this book here. Mofang Solid Volume Projector. Dimensional projector produces apparently solid apparitions with light, volume, and some sort of simulated mass. Mass. Ruko says all projectors will have similar power levels and communications protocols. There appear to be three primary elements. Projector element, beam emission, provides the primary light slash energy source. Control... I can't really read that. Is that array? I can't see it. Uh, some kind of control of the beam in three-dimensional color variable, and I also can't read that in variable. Uh, communications, also the same thing. Array, maybe? Array, uh, 
I don't know. Uh, internal... Okay, this is very difficult to read. I'm so sorry. I'm going to have to lean in closer to the computer here. Um, internal something. Signal supplied across gap to projection... That strange word again. <laughs> um... Yeah, th uh, there's, there's one thing I'm not a big fan of in this game. It's this weird font, but it does make everything look used and old, which I do like. Okay, so we'll use 7-volt communications level as a carrier voltage. Varying the voltage around that baseline voltage produces solid-like volume boxes in various colors formed from bottom to top, left to right. The Mofangs have tuned the re retrace timing to 30... Uh, something for us. Mighty kind of them. For a full 3D resolution, or approximately 7, 575 by 150 by 150, the converter would be required to adjust the voltage about every three... What is that? Millimeters? It looks like an A almost. I don't know. I don't have an abundance of circuitry to build converters running at 333... That thing again. For still projections... Ruka? Uh, the refresh doesn't matter. The display in is persistent until slash unless the voltage varies from 7 volts. I can produce the projection from a still image and get the voltage to 7 to maintain it. Less than 0 0.8 volts results in clear slash open slash seamless seamless? I don't know. Display space. Note, sound will be handled separately. Some projection... Man, this is tough to read. I'm sure in the video it will be much clearer, but I'm trying to not be so close to my screen just so that the microphone is not uh, picking up the laptop sound as much. I'm sure there's still a little bit of sound, but um, I think this will help a little bit. Slight shimmer from radio interference. Moving image corruption. There's that word again. Noise. Noise. That's the word. Noise toward bottom of projection. Images above projection are bound, are arm bounds are possible. Checking for potential hidden lethality, mayor's suggestion. Checks out, can't find anything destructive. Consistent spurious, very high frequency background carrier. No idea what that could be. Odd side effect, projection intersecting any part of cell wall suppresses all transport. Not sure why I tried this. Farley claims it's related to some desire of mine to shoot everything at everyone else. Everything else. Looks like these are notes that CW has uh, provided here. And they all seem to tie to um, these devices, which we've seen uh, a form of outside in uh, creating those, um, um, those imagers that the mayor has used to... Uh, and also Farley used at, at her place to welcome everybody. Ah, and here's one now. So this one is more akin to the ones that we saw out there. Looks like the button for it is sitting here, though. Hmm. So it seems like even though the Mofang um, became enemies with everyone here in Hunrath at some point, they were at least at one point friends. Um, at least if they were giving them this technology, which Huming is uh, from them. Let's see if we can find any more uh, notes around here. It's also this thing, which shoots out a blue beam to the one that we see over there uh, from this thing. Let's turn that off for now. Maybe there's some info about it before we actually use it. CW, please change Farley's lock code to secure the vaults. Her address backwards should suffice. Regards, Josef Jansen, Mayor Jansen. All right, so that is more than likely the uh, the lock that we saw earlier uh, at the very back of her house. So we're going to have to check that out. 
lock down list, lock tree gate, lock Farley's house, lock lower tower, lock upper tower, lift minecart into workroom, turn on mofang disabler, shut garage door, pump water from tree roots, turn on imager rocks, close swing bridge, divert river, turn off power, activate the dome disabler. So this is all the uh, stuff that everyone had to do to get ready for the battle, presumably. And we're going to have to undo a lot of this stuff. And it definitely serves as some confirmation, along with the thing over there, that the rocks are indeed an illusion, if they're called imager rocks. So that's good to know. Uh, let's read this guy. Mofang Disabler, Villain Technology. Notes from Aprar. 1. Designed to disable anything based on Mofang technology. 2. Disables when blue beam slash cloud is within about 1.5 feet of every Mofang device element. 3. Elements physically collapse. Uh, reassembly is possible, but non-trivial. 4. Aparar assures me that it's not harmful, still not pointing it at my head. 5. Ruko has not been told that the Villains provided it. Interesting. So this introduces us to uh, a new group of people or aliens or something called the Vilain. We don't really know anything about them, but apparently this um, blue beam stuff that we keep seeing around here is their technology, which is good to know, and it disables Mofang technology. So from what we've read, it looks like these things are Mofang technology, and this thing is... Uh, a version of this uh, disabler mechanism. So let's see if we can find a way to work this. This uh, turns around and whoa! Okay. And it broke apart. So I wonder if we can do the same thing with this. Aha! There we go. So I'm going to assume that the button is pretty much useless now, right? Yeah, okay. But that still doesn't solve the question of what to do with this one, so we're going to have to come back here in a minute, but I want to continue exploring around here first. We've got this giant structure that we saw last time. Battery slash capacitor log. Um, I'm not going to really read all this, but it looks like this is a bunch of notes about what the battery has been used for or how it's been worked on. And that seems to plug it in. Right now we seem to have power on, so I'm not really inclined to use this until we know what it's for. So let's just keep it uh, uh, disconnected for now. Hopefully later we can find out a little more about what that's all about. And then we've got this set of tracks that extend way up here and goes toward the tree area. That's pretty cool. But over here we can't actually move any further. Oh well. This path precariously goes up here to this uh, nozzle thing. Or not nozzle, um, handle. It looks like this is a water pump that comes from the tower and goes all the way out to the tree area. I imagine the tree will need some water, so let's just go ahead and do that now. But the bigger question is, what to do with this? Now, it makes sense um, where it's positioned, actually, in light of what we've read, because if the Mofang are um, the enemies of the citizens of Hunrath, and if the blue beam can uh, harm anything related to Mofang technology, and I'm assuming that means actual Mofang people or, uh, um, or whoever they are, then it stands to reason that he placed this here as a security measure so that they couldn't get through this opening. At least that seems like a reasonable conclusion. We still don't really know everything about the Mofang yet, but... It just seems too conveniently placed to be a coincidence. Alright, this is indeed an elevator button thing. So it looks like this rail does slide that down. Alright. That, uh, that head thing that, that the blue beam is coming out of kind of looks like a similar design as that robot 
that we saw in the garage through the window. I'm wondering if that robot is somehow also related to these uh, Vilain things. That'd be interesting to find out. Anyway, let's see if we can do something about this. Enter. Alright, so we can ride this thing around. Now, this actually confused me a lot when I first played the game, because uh, I didn't really realize um, that you could do more than just swing this around. You could actually drive the cart. What was not obvious was this, which I don't know if this was even flashing in the original version of the game. They may have patched this such that this is more noticeable. But if you use this and then use the WS keys, you can actually move the cart forward, which is way more convenient than trying to shoot the beam through all these panels and hopefully hit this red thing. So, since this is a Mofang piece of technology, hopefully hitting it will therefore disable this membrane thing that CW wants us to get rid of. So let's go ahead and turn this back on. We'll slide... there you go. We'll slide this guy over here. Looks like we might need to move a little bit for that to work. Can we move back and have this still work? Okay, it's looking like we can get it if we move just a little bit further. There we go. Okay. Alright, and let's do this. Woo! That is certainly a sight you don't see every day, isn't it? Okay, it looks like the red part of it over here is gone, so we'll turn that off. It's right out here. So despite the dome portion of this being uh, disabled, it looks like the alien world that we're seeing is still outside, which is rather interesting. So, now that we've done that, let's see what CW has to say to us at this point. What you got for us, buddy? Okay. Didn't even open the door there. Well, that's... I guess it makes sense. I mean, we did affect something that uh, covered the, the dome exterior thing there, so let's see if what, what happens when we uh, try to go through it. And at the meantime, I kind of also want to go back this way because we want to try out that uh, code. Actually, we need to look at what the address is before we try out the code to make sure we've got the right code uh, for Farley's house. So, I wonder what wonders await us beyond the, uh, the membrane here. Hopefully that alien world is at least hospitable to us. I imagine CW uh, has maybe been out there, if he's telling us to go out. Although Farley did say to be careful with who we trust, so, you know, he may not necessarily be entirely trustworthy. Okay, so Farley's address is... 1436. So address backwards would be 6341. Alright. And we can't hop off them. We'll have to go. We'll have to go through here at least. And my inputs are kind of getting a little delayed slash exaggerated, so we'll stop here. Come on. Eh. So whoa. That's not normal. We can see the alien world, but right when we come up to the exterior of the dome, uh, the membrane here, we can see what appears to be more of Hunrath. And when we move, he also moves. Looks like these rails perfectly line up. Okay. Well, we made it to another part of Hunrath. And it seems like it's the complete opposite side. This is the, uh, the bridge area, or the, the walkway area that we rotated to get to the other side of the river. So this is on the complete opposite end of the world. So there wasn't really a path to the alien world, it's just an illusion. We just ended up on the opposite end of Hunrath instead. 
So, anything interesting over here? Let's take a look at this. Another one of these rail switches. And it seems like this is another part of that junkyard that we could see from down below over here. Yeah, you can see the, the part that we were next to when we were trying to get the power turned on. What's this over here? Well, it's not very obvious unless you're really, really looking closely, but this entrance here is um, covered in those red-tinted rocks. And given that the minecart uh, tracks go here, we could more than likely take that um, that blue beam all the way up here so we can disable that, which is pretty nifty. Let's see where this ends up. So it looks like our theory is confirmed. The more we move one way, it moves in the opposite direction as far as where we're going to. Fascinating. And this ends up over by this gate where we turned off, or where we looked at the imager rocks over there. Which are thankfully over here right by where the tracks uh, uh, go by it, so that's kind of convenient. But we'll deal with that here in a little bit. First, I really want to go and uh, figure out how to get into Farley's place. Mainly so we can uh, see what all is in there, since it's technically the first place that we were supposed to go to if we were normally uh, coming to Hunrath as a new arriver without all the battle stuff going on. So let's go ahead and run back all the way there. After that, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to... Oh, I just noticed there's a pathway that's marked here. That's kind of neat. Um... I'm going to try to um, use the minecart to disable all those rocks. And hopefully we can find out even more secrets of this area uh, from uncovering stuff. Particularly the rocks that are in front of the, uh, the tunnel right by that gated area that we were just passing by a minute ago. I mean, all the rest of them we kind of know um, either what's on the other side of them or that they're on the other side of them. And while we're here, let's take a look at this thing. Okay, so everything is turned on except the town, garage, and ramp. Well, I don't really know what would be in the town to power since we took care of CW and we are not really using anything else in the town. Uh, so the garage and the ramp, wherever this is, these are not powered quite yet. So we're going to have to figure that out. Maybe there's something on the other side of that thing that uh, can help us with that. Meantime, uh, let's go and try the code out to see if there's anything useful here inside the uh, the house. And yes, I do know that there's other membrane pathways that we could try taking, like the one over there, but I'm going to save that for a little bit later. All right. So, do we use this door? Aha, there we go. Wow. Looks like somebody had just tra- well, maybe not trashed the place, but somebody had certainly left it in a mess. Here's a map of Hunrath. Let's see what we got here. So this is where we started, this area up here. We came down this way, and this is where Farley's house is, so currently we're inside this area. Uh, we entered through the back section, which was this pathway over here. Um, there's also this body of water here that says Bleeder and Lake. I don't know if it's meant to be called Bleeder Lake, but this is the lake that has that strange towering structure on it. Uh, continuing to go counterclockwise, we've got the rail yard that we had just walked through, where the power thing was. Along with the fuel, uh, where the garage is, supplies, which is presumably where the junkyard is. Um, and I guess it's more marked here with the scrapyard. Um, over here, we've got the Bosque 
which is um, the kind of wooded area that we walked through to get to the stone sphere, which is presumably what this thing is. The river, which runs throughout the course of the, uh, the right side of the map. Uh, the plateau was where we were walking around a little while ago um, when we first walked through the membrane. Waterfall, the source of the water, and here's CW's whole area with the workshop. This round thing is marked as battery, so it looks like this is the battery we were examining a little while ago, and the rest of the town as well as the cemetery. Um, the thing that's rather interesting about this map though, perhaps the most interesting, is that there's all these green lines. And although we haven't really explored a lot of these yet, um, you can kind of infer, based on what we've seen of the, the landscape so far, that these green lines are in fact the membrane uh, openings that we can walk through. And what's really interesting is that, at least as far as we can see, there does seem to be some correspondence between one side of the map and the other side of the map whenever one of these things comes up. So, for instance, you can see right here there are three lines grouped there and with one nearby. And at least approximately there seem to be three very faded lines right here with another one nearby. And these two over here seem to correspond to these two down here. Um... I'm guessing this one corresponds to the one up over this way. Um, this one over here, by the way, was the one that we couldn't walk through uh, at first, and we can't get back up to it now because the elevator power has been diverted this way with the water stuff. But the other ones here are fair game, and I'm particularly curious about this combination um, because the wall, as we've seen so far, seems to divide... Hunrath into these the north section and the south section, and if we can actually walk along the top of it, then maybe we could get to the central tower area. The tower area also seems to be connected, um, or at least adjacent to the tree, so getting to the tree might be contingent on exploring this area first. This area over here, we haven't even looked at this um, bottom section, like the very bottom section of the map at all, so that would be interesting to check out. So lots of stuff to take in here, but we'll have to remember that as we continue exploring. I think in the meantime, what I'm going to do for now is I'm going to go ahead and just uh, cut the video off here and just call it a day for now. I think at first I'm just going to unlock the, uh, the door here so we can get some easy access into Farley's place. There we go. Nice welcome sign, I like that. But we're going to look at more of the stuff here next time, and hopefully get a little bit more background on uh, what we need to do here, since this is, uh, again, the area that we were supposed to look at first. Um, but we'll do that in the next video. So until then, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, be sure to like, uh, comment, or subscribe, or tell a friend. It just lets me know that I'm doing something right and that you're enjoying the content. And either way, I will catch you on the flip side. So take care, and I will see you then.